Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in our short series of videos looking at how India achieved independence after World War II. As always we begin with our learning outcomes so by the end of this presentation you should know how the British East India Company brought India under British control. Second you should know three tactics adopted by Mahatma Gandhi in his pursuit of Indian independence. And third you guys should know what the Quit India Movement was and why it stopped. So it is important to say that this is not a comprehensive history of how India achieved independence. Um, it is being discussed in the context of the massive decolonization process at the end of World War II. Now, India officially became part of the British Empire in 1858. Uh, the British rule in India was known as the British Raj. But how did Britain come to rule this, this large subcontinent of India? Well, India's relationship with Europe changed dramatically um, after Vasco da Gama founded a sea route to India. Portugal set up trade colonies down here in Calicut, um, and uh, from these trading posts, uh, they would uh, trade desired Indian goods like cotton and silk. The British arrived here in Surat in 1608. Queen Elizabeth I, uh, before her death, she had given a charter to a British company. This company uh, became known as the British East India Company and was given a monopoly on trade in India, meaning that no other company from um, Britain could trade in India. However, uh, other countries did have trading posts in India and these countries regularly attacked each other. Merchants in India, uh, because there was such a demand for the goods, they increased prices. So to try to drive down the competition, the uh, competing powers in uh, India uh, tried to eliminate their, their competitors, um, which led to a lot of uh, conflict between um, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the French, uh, the Danish and the British in, in, in the Indian Ocean. Um, so the British East Company developed an army to protect their company. And eventually the British... Uh, who were setting up tra fortified training posts uh, because of the attack from the other powers, they came into conflict with the local rulers in India. The company then began to expand um, its trading posts um, in places here, like Bengal, uh, where modern-day Calcutta is, um, and they didn't want to um, pay taxes or they didn't respect the local customs, and through bribery and force, they gained control of large portions of um, India. Um, with thanks to men like Robert Clive and uh, victories at uh, in military conflicts at the Battle of Plassey and through their bribery, they um, they they really fortified their positions. They used deception, they used alliances, they used violence and bribery, and and, and really by the middle of the 1800s, and uh, the British East Indian Company. East India Company have a massive control over a whole subcontinent of India. Um, this led to the Great Indian Revolt of 1857. After that, Britain decided to formally take over rule of India from the company due to the massive amount of corruption. While there were many attempts in India uh, to throw off the British yoke, what we're going to look at and where India really began their successful push for independence started after World War I. And the main figure behind this push was the famous Mahatma Gandhi. So Gandhi became famous for fighting for rights for Indian people in South Africa. In uh, 1915, he returned to India and he attempted to win uh, Indian independence. Uh, he became associated with the Indian National, uh, sorry, the Indian National Congress Party or the INC. Um, Gandhi's program was focused on three main kind of tactics. The first was non-violence. Gandhi did not believe that violence should be used to gain independence. The second thing that Gandhi uh, preached was the idea of non-cooperation. He believed that British rule had only been allowed to take place in India due to Indian cooperation. Gandhi said that India uh, should stop cooperating with British rule and if they did this then British rule would collapse. Along with this policy of non-cooperation, Gandhi promoted a policy of Swadeshi which was a boycott of all goods that came from Britain and they did this to kind of undermine Britain's position in India. These uh, policies were very popular in there with large protests taking place. And these protests forced the British to give India more independence. They gave India their own parliament. They gave them control over certain governmental departments, such as the health department and the education department. They also gave the people of India more voting rights. 
Now, as part of the British Empire, when World War II broke out, uh, India joined Britain uh, and the Allies in World War II. Uh, but it was during World War II that Gandhi, along with the leader of the Indian National Congress Party, which he was associated with, um, Nehru, they intensified their protests for the complete independence of India. They called for the British to quit India, and this movement was the most aggressive movement that the INC launched. It led to Gandhi being arrested in 1942, um, and he was arrested for he was in prison for two years. This movement was called off in 1943 when the INC were kind of given indications that Britain would be willing to give complete independence to India. When Gandhi um, was released in 1944, India was about to take its final steps towards independence. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. So you guys should now know how the British East India Company brought India under British control. You guys should know three tactics adopted by Gandhi in the pursuit of Indian independence. And finally, you guys should know what the quit India movement was and why it stopped. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys got something good from this video.